Hello everyone, it's Marty from Down the Rabbit Hole Travel, and it is time for another DIY printable escape room video. This game is called Theft at the Burlington Track, and it's a short one, only meant to last about 15 or 20 minutes. I've kind of directed this game at teachers and homeschool educators, but it would work for large group events where you want a fun little activity that many people can participate in with an easy flow. So stay tuned for more. I had originally uploaded this game to a website called Teachers Pay Teachers because I absolutely believe there's a place for escape rooms in schools. In an escape room, players have to use logic, problem solving, teamwork, even basic math. So escape rooms actually fit into an educational framework naturally. However, Teachers Pay Teachers underwent some recent changes lately and I'm not a big fan of them, so I'm cutting out the middleman and now you can get the escape room game directly from me here on YouTube. So let's just get straight to it and let me show you the game. Okay, so the premise of the game is that a prize racehorse has been stolen from the Burlington racetrack and you have to find all of the suspects, narrow them down and locate the actual thief. It's done in a series of stations, so you can set this game up all around a room and have small groups go from station to station to solve the crime. I'll quickly walk you through all the different stations in this video, but this video isn't actually going to be your setup guide because I have a printable and downloadable package that you can purchase from me for $10 Canadian, and it will have all of the steps laid out in the package for you. So you'll first guide your players to station one where the actual case file will be sitting, waiting for them to read. So they're gonna open up the case file. They'll find this police document inside, asking them to find the racehorse and find the thief. And there will be a little clue inside right here, which is a riddle. And they have to solve the riddle in order to figure out the next station. So somewhere else in the room, obviously I'm just using the same spot for everything in this video because I'm lazy and I don't wanna go all over my house. But somewhere else in the room, you will have set up station number two. In station number two, there is gonna be a bunch of these different clocks and you can have them kind of hanging everywhere. I just have them resting here so they'll all fit in the shot. But if this were me, I would have them up on the walls kind of everywhere so they have to kind of look around. And they'll also find this folder just sitting there, but it's gonna be locked with a four letter word lock. And this is just a folder from the dollar store. I added a book ring here so that it would fit any size lock. And then I just punched a hole in the side so that you can actually lock this zipper folder up. Good little dollar store tip for you. The riddle from the case file at station number one is going to be a four letter word. The four letter word will obviously open up the four letter word lock. Inside the zippered folder, players are gonna find this photo finish image of a horse race. Oh, the horse is all finished at a time of zero. That's really weird. It says, what a close race. Those horses all finished within milliseconds of one another. Find the winner's time score to move on. Probably not zero, zero, zero. That's just too obvious for a lock combo, but look, the zeros have different colors. When players go to look at all of these clocks hidden all around station two, well, not hidden, placed all around station two, they will hopefully figure out they need to match the colors from the photo finish image here to the colors on the clocks to get a four digit code. Now, when I've done this game in the past, it's usually been at trade fairs and such for my mobile escape room business that is my like legit job. Um, and I set this game up as it is in a horse stable. So I borrow some benches and I have some horse saddles and some horse blankets and horseshoes and all of the paraphernalia. And I set that up so it looks like we're inside a stable. That way it actually looks kind of natural and not even slightly suspicious that there are horse blankets draped 
on some of these stands and saddles. So once you have station three set up, obviously in a totally different spot in the room, you are gonna have something that's covered with a horse blanket. I just have this baby blanket because it kind of looks like something you would find inside of a stable. Um, and this was usually on a stand that had a horse saddle. So make sure you've got a place where you can drape a blanket for this part of the game. Getting back on track, the players will have figured out a four digit code based on these clocks that they found and the photo finish picture of the horse race. So they should know the four digit code for this lock keeping this box shut. So inside the lockbox at station number three, players will find this newspaper article and it's all about, oh, they've found the missing racehorse. That's awesome. But the suspect is still at large. How are we going to find out who stole the horse? Down at the bottom of the newspaper article, scratched in there, is remember to pack the blankets with a star. Hmm, that's probably an important message. Since this is the only station that actually has a horse blanket, players should maybe start fiddling around and looking at it and they will find tucked underneath the blanket, this strange looking sheet here. It has these little holes cut out of it. Players should hopefully notice at some point that this document is just about the exact same size as this document and they do line up. When you line them up, hmm, that doesn't do anything. Well, that just shows little peekaboo pictures of the horse. What is going on? If players can line it up properly, however, they are going to find that it highlights certain words such as up, right, down, left, right, down. Well, that looks like that could be something. Shocker, shocker, the next lock at the next station is a directional lock. So it looks like that little newspaper peekaboo clue could come in handy here. Also at station number four is this foam board, pegboard looking item, and it has a clue on the front as well. Right off the bat, players can use the directions that they have discovered in this newspaper clue from station three to open up this directional lock. There's a lot of goodies in this box. First off, players will find this note at the top. It basically tells your players that police have narrowed the suspects down to five people and that they have collected some gossip from all of the people that were at the racetrack on the day the horse was stolen. And that sifting through this gossip should help you be able to narrow down who the suspects are. So inside this package that was underneath that little note, Players will find all of the gossip bubbles. So there's gonna be a big stack of these little gossip bubbles. And little stick figures of these suspects. Looking at the popsicle sticks, players should maybe figure out they're probably supposed to go in this stand somehow. And the stand says, using the clues, please clean from the crowd at the racetrack that day, arrange the suspects in the correct order on this pegboard. It will help you pinpoint the real thief. So once players read through all of these little gossip bubbles and figure out the clues regarding these suspects, they're gonna put the suspects in the correct order so that they know who comes first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now, I realize not everyone wants to make these pegboard props out of foam board or glue figures onto popsicle sticks. So in the downloadable package that I have created, you actually just have rectangular pictures of the suspects and they lay down on a flat board for the suspects. So you don't have to create this pegboard or glue things onto popsicle sticks. I've made it really easy for you to just print and play. All right, once players have put their suspects in the correct order, either you can build the pegboard if you really want to, or just on the sheet that's provided in the downloadable package. Once they have that in the correct order, they can move on to station five. 
which also has a bunch of goodies sitting there for them. It has some suspect envelopes. It's got the suspect's names written and only open if he's your suspect. All of them say basically the same thing here, but we're really not sure which one is our suspect. We just have them on the pegboard. What do we do? Looking at this locked cage, we see that there's something tucked inside. Looks like a key probably. And on top, we have one more little piece of gossip here. My sister's husband's cousin was the lady who identified the thief from the police lineup, blah, 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 blah. Basically tells you that the fourth person in the lineup is the kidnapper or horse napper. I don't know what you call it. So players have to look at their lineup, pick out the fourth person. If they did the lineup correctly and they open up that envelope, they will find a confession and the code to open this lock. However, if they did the order incorrectly and they don't have the right person in the fourth position on the lineup, what they're going to get inside the envelope is an alibi. And then they have to go back and redo the pegboard, figure out who the actual person in the fourth spot will be, and then open up their envelope to see if they can find a confession. So you gotta do some reading and some logic here to figure it out. If you get the correct criminal, they'll give you the code to the lock. You can open up this cage. And what I like to have my players do is take the fourth person in the lineup. Get over here, Danielle. And I like to have them lock the person up inside the cage. You criminal, get in there. Then players can take the key and go on to the final station. Now the final station is 100% optional. You don't have to provide prizes for the people who finish the game. You can just end it by having the criminal get locked into the cage and you're done. However, I find most people have extra incentive when there's candy or prizes to be had at the end of the game, which is why I threw in this final station. So players will have found this key inside that locked cage at the very end of station five. Inside it says, uh, you locked up the horse thief and saved the day, you've earned your reward. They take their key, which they can then use to open up this lock. And inside you can have whatever you want. You can have little eggs filled with candies. You can just have straight up candy. You can have money. I don't care what you put in there. Whatever you want to use for incentive is fine by me. And that's the game, short and sweet. It can go a little longer if you decide not to give any clues or hints. It can go a little faster if you kind of want to follow some of the players around and help them out at certain stations. If this is something you can see yourself using in a classroom or homeschool setting, or if you have a big like dinner party coming up and you want to keep your guests entertained in small groups of like three or four, I don't think I'd go any larger than groups of three or four just because of the size of the game. You can totally order this game directly through me. I sell it through PayPal. Uh, it's $10 Canadian and all you have to do is send me your $10 Canadian through PayPal but make sure you write in the little notes area that this is for theft at Burlington Track and please give me your email address so I know where to send the package to. I will put all of the necessary ordering information in the description box below on my YouTube channel. If you have any questions about ordering this game through PayPal just let me know my email is down the rabbit hole and rabbit with a W at gmail.com and I will try and help you out any way I can. All of the setup instructions and details are in the package. It's probably the most detailed package I've created yet. So you can refer back to this video if you need to see how I've set things up, but all of the information that you need to set up your own successful Theft at Burlington Track escape room game should be there in the package. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking that thumbs up button, sharing the video link on your social media, and leaving a comment. To all my returning viewers, welcome back and thanks for watching. And to anyone new, welcome and hello. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and click the bell button too, so you can catch any new videos I upload.